Hello everyone, welcome to my quickie review of Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition. It's a great title. For both things, my YouTube video and the games. They're both equally terrible, actually. So, what is Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition? So this is a port of the PS3, Xbox 360, and PC version of Darksiders 2. I don't know which one exactly, I'm assuming the PC version. This is a port to Xbox One and PS4. And PC, which is what we're going to be looking at today. Let's actually get right into it. So options. A lot of these are actually the same as the original. Now, aside from some graphical enhancements, they've claimed that they've balanced the looting system. And that's pretty much it, actually, for gameplay features. I believe they've actually added in some DLC. They're, they're at least all of the DLC, as far as I'm aware, they, they don't make this too clear on the Steam page. They've added pretty much all the original content from Dark Souls 2 and ported over to this game. Graphics options are pretty much the same, and they're actually pretty disappointing. So, you have to restart if you want to change your resolution. Plenty of resolution options, though. You can even go to, like, 480p, which is potato quality, but you can do that. The original Dark Souls 2 actually was really nice because you can run it on a variety of hardware. There's no windowed uh, borderless mode, and you have to restart if you want to change that. Ambient, ambient occlusion, you can change. Shadow quality, you can change. Anti-aliasing. Uh, speaking of the original, so yeah, it ran really well. This game doesn't, as we will demonstrate right here. Originally, I did the I did my video like several times, but I just you know I wasn't in like a, like a good segment to really demonstrate the frame rate. Now you're seeing like right here, it's fine, but it does kind of go up and down. Now, outside of certain areas like these small arenas, it can go crazy. I'm talking between 30 to 100 FPS in like a split second, and everything in between everywhere else. This is, by the way, running at an, on an R9 390 with an Intel Core i7-4790K at 1080p with anti-aliasing off. I mean, this thing should be running at like double its frame rate right now. I mean, when you think of games like Devil May Cry, everything maxed out. That game runs at like 144 at 1080p and just does not drop. It's beautiful. And this game just seems to be suffering from a lot of performance issues outside like of these areas. Like I get when I'm in like um, the open world areas, because this is an open world game, I get like anywhere between 30 to 50 frames per second. It can get pretty awful. So... You're pretty much sacrificing performance for graphics when you're comparing the two versions. Generally, uh, the main things I will say is that the character models look a lot better. Ooh, we got a new piece of equipment. This is an action RPG. We got some degrees, nice. Model quality is a lot better, as you can see, although the shadows are just, um, they don't look that great. They claim to be running on a new engine, but, uh, uh it's not very optimized for the new engine, then, I gotta say. Now, uh, is that below? That's from... Okay, so that's backtracking. We don't want to go there. So, the cool thing about the original Darksiders... Well, I mean, this one, too, is the... I, this is one thing I think the game does improve upon that I would say is significant. Um, so, the original port wasn't very good for PC, and this one isn't either. But it does come a little bit better than the original PC port, uh, for, w like, really well for one reason, because the Darksiders 2 world has this amazing aesthetic, right? When you look at things in the distance, like, the geometry looks breathtaking. The music just adds to that. It just looks, this gothic universe looks so good. Unfortunately, even on the PC version, uh, when you got close to things, you just saw these blurry, muddy textures. Now, here, they're a little bit more tolerable. Obviously, you don't want to look too close. It's third person, so you're not going to be, you know, brushing up against it too much, but you will. It doesn't look... It's acceptable. Nothing really shoddy or muddy. Uh, the original did have quite a, a lot of muddy um, textures, and the character models are have a lot more improvements to them, which is really nice. That is the one thing I can really say about this game that I, I notice, and, like, I can... It's just... Uh, this port, at least, is that the it's the character models. They're pretty good for what they are. Although there is some, I don't know if you saw that there. There's some weird lighting glitch. There was also a stutter in the frame rate too. 
trying to figure out where I'm supposed to go here. Uh, do I go down here? But yeah, um, it's just I, I now they have been fixing issues and they haven't actually actually adding some things like the ability to re-import your old save files. Although I've heard they've been saying like you know do that at your own risk. Uh, one day like my save files weren't like working when when I tried to import them import them over from my Dark Souls 2 save and then like I and then now they do. So that's cool, I guess. I got my original save. Although now when I tried to when I pushed it over because I I kind of moved the file over and then I think I moved it back. Um, now that save isn't working properly anymore, so I don't know what's going on with that. At least for the uh, Dark Siders 2 original game, in Death End of Edition, it works just fine. Really quick, uh, whoops. So I have my I have my Dual Shock it didn't crash. I have my Dual Shock uh, 4 controller and. You know, the mouse is, like, there's, you can use the touchpad on that thing to activate the mouse, and I kind of clicked off the screen. Again, it wouldn't be a problem if there was borderless windowed mode, but what are you going to do? A little bit about the game. It's, it's a pretty good character action game. It relies more on spells than it does on combos and cool, you know, stuff you can do, as well as the armor. It rounds the game up nicely. It's not going to have, like, the very, uh, like, a human amount, yeah, a huge amount of death, like, say, Metal Gear Solid, du Rising, du Metal, ew, what? Try again. Metal Gear Rising or Bayonetta, uh, it's they're not. It's not going to have the depth of combo systems like those games do. But it adds th stuff like spells. You can like do these teleport slashing abilities, and you do have combos. You do have extra weapons. Okay, we, we screwed that up. And if I could just not do that, let's. Because <laughs> the touchpad's right next to the options button. This is the inventory screen. Unfortunately, it hasn't been changed. It's not very good for mouse keyboard. On a controller, it plays beautifully. Everything else, it doesn't... On anything else, it doesn't play too well. Although I have heard some people are saying it works really well with the Steam controller. I'll have to see that to believe that this is a character action game. I'm not sure about that. Although, you know, the Steam controller does include an analog stick, and you really only have to use the... Uh, you only The only thing I would see is, like, just the camera being maybe an issue if you don't use the steam controller that much i hear a lot of people are like hey if you use it like at, for like two weeks straight it actually is godlike but if you don't it's you'll like hate it so overall i have to say um if you, there's actually one more thing and this leads ties into my final point and whether or not you should buy this game some of you might actually have this game and might not even know it yet for free the death end of edition because what they did was, they said, okay, if you have the complete original Darksiders 2, like, edition, so that's all the DLC plus the game, you get this game for free. That's cool. If you own the game, you get 66% off, so it's like, I think it's 14 bucks right now, until December, uh, not sorry, not December, that's, that's to say, today, January 1st, 66% off. That's also pretty cool. Okay, so you bought, so, uh, yeah, that's great, so what's the problem? What if you bought the original game for $60 on launch, and then you bought the Season Pass? You spent maybe $40 in DLC, $60 in game, so you spent about $100 on this game. But what if you didn't get one piece of DLC? You're not getting the Definitive Edition for free. I swear to God, this is saying that's going to give me a list, but... <laughs> anyway, that's pretty scummy. Uh, I the only reason why I got it is like I the, actually same thing I didn't own all the pieces of DLC I got the game uh, all of it mostly on sale I actually picked up the um, I, I picked up like the complete edition which included Darksiders 1 like the franchise pack and then um, uh, what happened was I kept it in my inventory because I wanted to sell it later and I just like okay well I just I'll just you know use it now so I'll get the this edition right I'm not gonna say definitive anymore it's just too hard look at that new sexy piece of armor look at that so cool. Look at death. It's just so... Model claw is really great. Um, but yeah, that's the only reason why I got it. And someone who paid like $100, like I paid like, I think I spent like, what, 30 overall on Darksider stuff? Darksiders 2 content, whereas someone spent over 100 and then that's not even counting, like, you know, possibly paying for Darksiders 1. Pretty much funding this game and showing Nordic games, like, in their... Because, like, the game, a game makes the most amount of money on day one for in terms of its sales 
And those people that, like, when North Games was deciding, should we buy the IP or not, their main point of data was probably from day one buyers. And now they're screwing those people over. And I, I, I will say it is cool that they're giving a lot of people like me who didn't buy it at full price or, you know, we don't, we're not the super loyal who, who bought it. Like, we, we're getting, like, a good discount here. Where am I going? Oh, oh, over there. But that's still, like, that's pretty inconsistent. Like, I paid $12 and I get a, and I get a game for free. Someone paid 100 they don't get that. Well, yeah. That's pretty much it for Darksiders 2. I, I feel like they could have handled it better. There could have been... It feels a little bit of... It still feels like a lazy port. I definitely... Okay, so here's my thoughts. If you own just the base game... And you're interested in playing it again, picking it up, maybe you saw this footage again, and you're like, oh, maybe I want to play it again. Uh, Definitive is not a bad way to re-experience it, if you have a decent rig. You'll probably be able to keep the game above 60 in the dungeons for the most part. And you'll get, of course, all the... You'll get all the, you know, DLC. Uh, if you... And, you know, it's only 14. Now, if you owned... If you own pretty much almost everything Darksiders 2 related, except, you know, one or two pieces that prevented you from getting the defin definitive edition, uh, don't waste your money. It's not worth... In fact, you're trading off, actually, because when you think about it, you're getting better, slightly better graphics for worse performance. And this is one of the games where, you know, graphics, like, are, are distant, distant from, the like, the priority, which is you want a buttery smooth frame rate for playing, uh, when playing this game. Because, again, it's character action. You're gonna be moving fast. You want the animations to be smooth, the timing, especially when you're playing on those higher difficulties. Let's get back to some of some stuff here. Teleport slash itself is so cool. I'm actually kind of getting stuck here, so I'll probably call it right now. And yeah, that's my thoughts. Take it with what you will. It's going to be up to you on how much you want to spend to either play this game for the first time or replay it again. If you haven't played it at all, this is a, still a great offer. You can't even get the original anymore, so that's actually really unfortunate. But yeah, Darksiders 2, Definitive Edition, New Edition, Death Edition, whatever you want to call it. It's fun. It's the same game, a little bit better, a little bit prettier. And I have no doubt that they're going to fix the performance problems. But for right now, I would, for most of you who've already played it, it's not going to be worth the $14. Or the $25 in some cases. Wait for a Steam sale if you can. Alright guys, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching and supporting the channel. I'm out.